Joining our panel now is Marco Lopez, former chief of staff to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency and a former advisor to Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto. Thank you for being with us Thank today. you, Nicole. My pleasure. Um, but let me start with you, John. What do you think about this uh, pretty full-throated attack on the character and political leanings of the Mueller team? I think it's insane. Um, but I think, it, you know, look, there's a... Uh, I, the one way in which I think it's true that Mueller and Comey are, are there are a lot of ways in which they're similar, and there are ways that, that Trump and a lot of his people don't understand. They, 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 are, they both are actually quite political, and in the sense that they understand Washington. They've been there for a long politically time. Politically astute. Politically not astute, politically, politically savvy. I don't mean biased. I mean, they, just, they get right. that it's a complicated thing the way that law enforcement, judicial politics, and policy and politics all intersect. That's a thing that exists in Washington. It's a unique genre of kind of interconnected. Those two guys understand that and the public facing nature of it as well as any two people I've ever seen in my career and it's part of why they are friends, but they are because of the kind of reputation they have, and particularly Mueller in Washington, mm -hmm. um, among mainstream Republicans, uh, among Democrats, among for the decades that they've been around, they are, he in particular, impervious to this kind of a smear campaign. And it is a, it's a bad hand the Trump people are playing if they think that the way to take down uh, Robert Mueller is to take him down in this way or to try to take him down at all. Now, we have seen presidents in the past go after special prosecutors. That's part of a, a Clinton playbook. We've seen that happen yeah, before. Well. But, right. yeah, but, but the, rea but the reality <laughs> right now there's not a receptive audience for that and if you go too far playing this card against Mueller they are going to lose the support of Republicans in Congress and once that happens yes. Donald Trump's done. Well, well, you I think need also to, hey, let me let Jen because I, I, nothing's made me laugh all hour except Jen saying we, we took down our special prosecutor well. Well, well our special elaborate. prosecutor and the Republicans that were impeaching Bill Clinton were doing it for partisan reasons and it was a partisan act. It was Republicans getting behind Ken Starr and impeaching Bill Clinton for something that he did not deserve to be impeached over. Over. But this is a this is a more serious matter, and these are career law enforcement officials doing this. And I think Trump is doing. It's not going to affect what Mueller does, but Trump is doing it to keep his supporters ginned up yep. and hope that that's a firewall with Republicans. But as you saw, Republicans are backing up a little bit and and defending Mueller, and that is probably the most concerning thing that's happened all week for the White House ultimately. M Margo, let me ask you a question: As someone who served as chief of staff inside a law enforcement right. agency, um, how squeamish? Were were you when you had any contact with any political appointee from the White House? Well, was, we were always very, very careful. And I think what we miss here in our conversation is that there is clearly no understanding by the administration that there is a long game here. And what the long game is that let's assume for all intents and purposes that he comes out squeaky clean, that there is a resolution by the special prosecutor, that there is no collusion, case closed, we move on. But what he has done is he has caused irreparable damage with the law enforcement community. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, working as leading the largest law enforcement agency in the world, Customs and Border Protection, that that will never, those for the next three years, those employees will remember that they, that they were treated and the way that the leadership, some of the best in the world were treated by the president. And I think that is a hole that he's not going to be able to dig himself out of. Good point. All right. Up next, President Trump moves to undo another big Obama policy while keeping another one intact that could upset some of his most loyal supporters. You're watching MSNBC International.
there are all kinds of roads. Some are long and dusty. There's no border fence. Others paved with gold. We're going to find out what went down in that meeting. There are rocky roads. The president bang. himself will hold it a bit. Is what? he confused or are you confused? No, I'm not confused. Gridlocked roads. It is all about the legal battle now boiling over. And roads well traveled. The numbers have exceeded expectations. But no matter the road, when the rubber meets it, these trusted NBC News journalists will be on it. Get out of my face. If you're going to ask me a question, so, step back and let me ask only Zell Miller. At the 2004 Republican convention here in New York, uh, saying he wished he could have a duel with me. I, I took that seriously, by the way. I wish we lived in the day where you could challenge a person to a duel. It was quite a moment. I did worry about us being on the Hudson the next day, along the bluffs there, with two Confederate dueling pistols being presented to me to choose from. America is complicated. It's messy. And that's a good thing. It's why our national anthem is a question. No, really. Can you see all these people with their experiences and their opinions? Can you hear them all speaking their minds? Americans are loud. Americans are bold. We find a way to get ourselves heard. And these are stories worth telling. I talked to a lot of people, many of them fighting mad. It's a divided country. People ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe on each and every issue. And it's not going to change anytime soon. I like a political fight as much as anybody. But are we going to get to some decisions or just keep fighting? The Last Word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Only on MSNBC. The biggest guests for the biggest questions. Oil Word with Greta. Nuts on MSNBC. Effective immediately, I am canceling the last administration's completely one sided deal with Cuba. We will very strongly restrict American dollars flowing to the military, security, and intelligence services that are the core of the Castro regime. They will be restricted. My action today bypasses the military and the government to help the Cuban people themselves form businesses and pursue much better lives. That was President Trump earlier today in Miami, the city at the heart of the nation's Cuban community. His clampdown on Cuban travel and trade is just another instance of an Obama-era rollback. So my panel's back, and I joked in the break that it reminds me of the Seinfeld where Costanza does everything the opposite. Whatever right. Obama did, yeah. Trump is for the opposite. Is this the yeah, case? It strikes me because there's not much of a constituency for this position, even among Cubans. It's uh, generational, even, so the Cuban. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, I, I, my best friend from college is Cuban. Her parents are refugees. They yeah. were rock-hard Republicans, and they were devastated. They went to Cuba for the first time since the 60s uh, a few months ago, and they are, you know, out at uh, Versailles, you know, the diner there, yeah. uh, right. protesting it. So for Jeb Bush, spent a lot of time at Versailles. <laughs> <laughs> I love Versailles. Yeah. Um, so it, uh, but the, but the dreamer, uh, protecting the dreamers is a is very good news and really welcome news. I'm not sure how real that is. I always question. You got to look at the fine print. But if he's really letting DACA stand, that's going to make that's going to ease the minds of a lot of well, for the 800,000 800, kids yeah, yeah. that actually really. benefited from the program i think it's great news but again there's no clear policy moving forward so is there an immigration plan is there going to be something that actually moves the ball forward instead of staying where we are is there which right be now it's great <laughs> stay where you are is great <laughs> is listen, listen to him thinking about all these complexities uh, right. and nuances he's so and like starry eyed <laughs> and idealistic is like, there going to be a well thought out plan no. <laughs> It's not that complicated. <laughs> Donald Trump's attacking Hillary Clinton the other day yeah. because 
the Republican base hates Hillary Clinton, so he wants to resurrect her. You know, she's not president. Who cares at this point, right? right? She's, right. In, she's retired. He wants to attack her because that riles up the base. He wants to do things that are the opposite of Barack Obama because that riles up the base. The one thing that's reliable for Trump yeah. is that there's a bunch of people in the Republican Party who love anything that raises right. up the bogeyman of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton. So he's going to be raised and talking about Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama as much as possible going forward just to try to keep that enthusiasm in that I think gradually started to shrink core of Trump base voters. But there's no policy. There. There's no policy. No, of course yeah. not. He's saying you don't know really what it means. We course, welcome we tell, we the tell. announcement, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. And, and the the real small base, and you're right, that is generational around this Cuban issue. Right. I mean, I, I thought they were going to bring out the cast of F Troop and start <laughs> right. the, that, that war from, uh, I mean, that, they, that's what they look like. They're fighting a war that's no longer on the yeah. battlefield. I, I, even I worked for Governor Jeb Bush in the, uh, you know, 17 years ago, and, and this, it was generational then. Young people didn't see. I, I want to get Robert Trainum in on this because the DACA news is obviously um, pretty significant and a significant shift, and it doesn't make everyone happy. I think I have Ann Coulter expressing her displeasure. I want you to react on the other side. What I'm frustrated with right now is I think the GOP should change their motto to next time. You have Donald Trump with, um, he gives away DACA and then he doesn't get the wall. What a good humanitarian by saying what a big heart he has for those dreamers, the illegal aliens he promised to deport. Next time we'll get them. Now, Robert, I'll admit to sort of being uh, that version of the opposite, which she's for, I'm usually against. But... Um, does, does, does this, is, this, is she a canary in the mine with Donald Trump's 38% hardcore base? I mean, can Donald Trump sort of sustain making people like Ann Coulter mad without winning over any converts in the rest of the political universe? That's a good question, and I don't know it. I don't think anyone knows. I listened to talk radio uh, this afternoon, and I was trying to listen from, to Rush and some of the others to see if, in fact, there's any crack, any crack in the, in the armor, and there doesn't appear to be as of yet, except from Ann Coulter. So the question really becomes, if an Ann Coulter, if a Sean Hannity, if a Rush Limbaugh, I mean, the true bedrock, red meat, hard right uh, social conservatives begin to say, hmm, you know, maybe the emperor doesn't have any clothes here, that's when I think that 38% really starts to crack, and that's when I think uh, the president's going to be in really, really bad news. Look, the re there's a reason why Vice President Pence and Marco Rubio was on the stage in Florida with, mm -hmm. with the president today. There's a reason why that was raw red meat that he threw to the base today that totally contradicted the DACA stuff. So, I mean, politically, I have to give the White House some creds to this because it was actually a really smart move from a political standpoint. Not from a policy standpoint, but definitely from a political standpoint. I, I, th I think it's a mistake to Inflate the dreamers and the DACA stuff with uh, with the wall. And I think I think and I think it's important because I do think that right. for a lot of the hardcore anti-immigrant base, the dreamer stuff has never mattered to them as much as the oh. build the wall to. Or the illegal immigrants who are criminals. <laughs> if he can, if he continues to, to say at least he's going to build the wall, he could probably hold those people because this issue is not the core issue for them. It's not the thing that animates them most. Why is the wall so satisfying? I mean, there's already a wall and there's already drone protection. I mean, why is the wall so satisfying to someone like Ann Coulter? It's an uh, easy image and it's an easy visual for people to wrap their. It's, it's not, totally fake, but what's real? I mean, well, literally, DACA. I mean, letting I letting mean, Dreamer stay. Is but Secretary Kelly, he announced it today, so he's the adult in the in the room at this moment with the DACA issue. But will tomorrow the president actually realize what the secretary did and do something different? Uh -huh. That's the problem, and that's the level of uncertainty when you have someone who's kind of isolated himself between him, Jared, and Ivanka, and they roll out a plan like the one we saw today in Florida as the government tries to actually keep up and, you know, clean up the mess. But well, you said tomorrow. Yeah. His Twitter is broke tonight. <laughs> well, 